Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at techniques for finding asymptotes of rational functions. So our problem is the following. A function f is defined by f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Find all asymptotes and use this to sketch a graph of y equals f of x. We'll check for horizontal asymptotes first. Remember, those are found by evaluating the limits as x approaches infinity or minus infinity. So we have two limits to work with here. Let's start with the limit at infinity. Now, we're going to do some strange algebra in evaluating this limit, but it turns out to have a, a good lesson at the end. So let's work through this. So we want the limit as x goes to infinity of this quotient of two polynomials. By the way, such a quotient is called a rational function. Okay. Now, we're going to start by looking at the highest order terms in the numerator and denominator. That's 3x squared and x squared. We're going to factor 3x squared out of the numerator and x squared out of the denominator. Okay. So, doing the factorization gives us the following. And you can check this, and you should. Notice that if I take this stuff in the top, if I multiply the 3x squared by the stuff in these parentheses and simplify, I get the original numerator back, and the same works for the denominator. So this is kind of a non-standard factorization, but it is uh, true nonetheless. We next use the fact that the, product of a, the limit of a product is the product of limits, and allows us to write this as a product of two limits. The limit as x goes to infinity of 3x squared over x squared, and the limit as x goes to infinity of this more complicated quotient. Now, we're going to evaluate this second limit first, and notice that as x gets large, each of these fractions, for example this one, with an x the denominator, is going to go to 0. That's because the denominator gets very big, and that drives the fraction to 0. 4 over a huge number is very small. So what that looks like is this. We're going to leave the limit of the simple quotient out in front unevaluated. And what that leaves us with is then in the second quotient, this limit, when those four fractions go to 0, gives us that. Of course, that later expression is just 1. And so this makes for a very easy limit to evaluate, uh, just gives us the answer 3. Now the point of all this is the following. This is something that works anytime you work with limits of rational functions. That is quotients of two polynomials if you're taking the limit at plus infinity or minus infinity. Notice we, uh, that the limit came down to just evaluating 3x squared over x squared as x goes to infinity, and that we see those terms right here. So this is a kind of a lesson to keep in mind. When you take the limit as x goes to infinity or minus infinity of a rational function quotient of polynomials, that limit can be evaluated by just saving the two terms of highest order, the one in the numerator, one in the denominator, and looking at the limit of that quotient. In this case, this turned out to be 3. I still expect and may ask you to go through the work down here or similar work doing these kind of factors, but this is a, a really important idea to keep in mind and one that will pay off in later semesters. So the fact that this limit is 3 tells us y equals 3 is an asymptote, at least in the positive direction. We also have to consider the limit as x approaches minus infinity. We use the same steps as in the previous limit, and we find the following. That is, x goes to minus infinity. We could go through these same algebraic manipulations that we did down here and come up with this fact that, again, this limit turns out to be 3. And again, this business about ratio of high order terms still plays out. So this tells us y equals 3 is also a horizontal asymptote in the negative direction, and hence, the only horizontal asymptote is y equals 3. So we'll remember that and use it later when we sketch our graph. Vertical asymptotes might occur at values for which one or both of the one-sided limits is equal to plus or minus infinity. 
For rational functions, these values are among the values for which the function is not defined. That is, the values for which the denominator is zero. We can determine these values by factoring the denominator. Okay. So you can check that this denominator, x squared minus 3x plus 2, factors in this way. Just multiply this factorization on the right and uh, make sure that you get back to that side. And of course, we can see once this is factored that f of x is defined for all x values except x equals 1 and x equals 2. The denominator is 0 when x equals 1 or x equals 2. Okay. So this tells us the only possible vertical asymptotes are at x equals 1 and x equals 2. We'll check x equals 1 first. Now for to really determine the behavior of an asymptote, it's important you consider limits from both the left and right at each possible asymptote. Now, I want to add here, again, uh, just because the denominator is 0 at these points 1 and minus 1, that does not mean we have a vertical asymptote there. It just tells us that those are possible vertical asymptotes. We're going to do this extra work involving one-sided limits at 1 and then at 2 to decide whether we really do have asymptotes at these points. So let's consider one first. We'll take the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side, that is from the right, of our function. There it is in factored form. Now, we're going to be a little careful about this. This, th this kind of reasoning is very subtle, and you want to be sure you understand how to think it out, how to write it out, and present the evidence for your conclusions. So when x approaches 1 from the right, this means x is close to 1. That's what approaches 1 mean. And it also means it's greater than 1. Okay. That's what the plus side means. So, we ha so we're going to pretend our x is close to 1 but greater than 1. Now let's look at the numerator. When x is close to 1, the numerator is close to 3 minus 4 minus 4, which is minus 5. And we get that just by plugging x equals 1 in here. x is close to 1. We can just put in 1 there, and then we get that calculation out of it. Likewise, when x is close to uh, 1, the x minus 2 term is close to minus 1. That's just 1 minus 2. And the one you want to be careful about is the x minus 1 term. Again, remember that x is close to 1 and greater than 1. Greater than 1 means x minus 1 is positive, and close to 1 means x minus 1 is small. Okay. And so x minus 1 turns out, we're going to think of that as a small positive number in this analysis. So for x close to 1, this quotient we're concerned about looks about like this. The top is close to minus 5, the bottom is close to minus 1. That's the x minus 2 contribution. And then the x minus 1 is going to contribute a small positive number. Now, minus 5 divided by minus 1 is 5. You divide 5 by a small, very small positive number, you're going to get a large positive answer. And that suggests plus infinity for the limit. So you want to think about this analysis of uh, things that are in the denominator and going to zero. You're going to have to determine whether, as they go to zero, they are small positive or small negative numbers. Anyway, with this, uh, we can now say there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And we've shown that the graph rises to plus infinity as we approach 1 from the right. We now consider the left-hand limit at x equals 1. So take the limit now as x goes to 1 from the left-hand side, 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 over, again, x minus 1 times x minus 2. Same reasoning. If x is close to 1 but less than 1, the numerator is close to minus 5. That's the same reason as before. If we, put x, if we put an x close to 1 in this numerator, we get about 3 minus 4 minus 4 is minus 5. Likewise, as before, x minus 2 is close to minus 1. 
And now the x minus 1 turns out to be a small negative number. Okay? And that's because, again, if x is close to 1, x minus 1 is small, and if x is less than 1, then x minus 1 is negative. So we have a small negative number. So our quotient is looking something like this. For x less than 1 and close to 1, we have essentially minus 5 over a small negative times minus 1. This gives us 5 over a small negative number now. That kind of quotient will be large and negative. That suggests minus infinity for the limit. So, uh, we have a bit more information about the vertical asymptote at x equals 1. We now know that the graph falls to infinity as we approach 1 from the left. So, we have uh, one more point to consider. That's x equals 2. Now, this one's a little different. We're going to see that actually there is not a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And this example shows the kind of reasoning or the kind of... Uh, uh, hints you get or the evidence where you might be uh, looking to arrive at that conclusion. So, as before, we might start by saying, well, let's consider the right-hand limit as x approaches 2. Now, in this, we note now that as x gets close to 2, both the numerator and the denominator are getting close to 0. They approach 0. And that is found by just checking out what happens if we put x equals 2 in the top, and what happens if we put x equals 2 in the denominator? Now that's a 0 over 0. So this is a 0 over 0 form. And we know those mean more work. That usually means do some factoring. So the factoring looks like this. We factor the numerator. And of course, as you expect in problems like this, the 0 over 0 forms, you see a common factor. And so the simplification leads to a much simpler quotient. And now as x goes to 2, there's no worries about 0 in the denominator. And it's easy to see that this limit turns out to be 8. Now notice, uh, once we identified the 0 over 0 form here, we dropped the x approaches 2 from the positive side just, and just focused on the limit as x goes to 2. Okay, So this tells us that uh, because x approaches, uh, the limit as x approaches 2 exists in this finite, that there's no vertical asymptote at x equals 2. But keep in mind that f of x is not defined at x equals 2 because f of 2 is undefined. And as our work above just showed, the reason f of 2 is undefined is because when you plug 2 into the function f, you get 0 over 0, and which is, of course, that does not exist or is undefined. We're going to take that into account in the graph in just a moment. Okay. So for the graph, let's start by drawing the asymptotes. We have 1 at x equals 1, a vertical asymptote, and a horizontal asymptote, y equals 3. Looks something like this. Now, uh, our analysis showed that as we approach 1 from the right, that the values of the function go off towards infinity. So we might expect the graph of the function is going to be looking something like that. As we came into 1 from the left, the values tended toward minus infinity. So we might expect evidence like this. So this part shows the function values approaching plus infinity as we come in from the right. And here we see approaching minus infinity as we come in from the left. y equals 3 is a horizontal asymptote. So we might guess that uh, since the graph is above the line over here that it's probably going to come in something like this as a horizontal asymptote and likewise come in like that from the other side. Now later on we'll see more ways to use calculus to find out more about this kind of graph and uh, be able to say definitely this happens but for now we just let our machine do the graph and had the following. Okay, So we've done this analysis and the graph indeed looks like this. Finally, notice that we have this open dot in the graph at x equals 2. That's because, remember, f of 2 is not defined. Of course, f of 1 is not defined either. That's what the evidence the asymptote gives. We saw earlier that as x approaches 2, the limit turns out to be 8. And you can see that in the graph, too. This open dot occurs at about 
the 8 level here on the graph. And so there's what the graph looks like and how the asymptotes might help you do that.